I put a cheap rev counter on it. Uh, it wasn't very good, it wasn't very accurate, it frustrated all over the place. So I bought a slightly better one, <coughs> made by Run Leader. And the advantage of this one as well, it also has a engine temperature probe sensor, which is this bit. And that goes under the spark plug. And like every good lamp better on it. I've just gone in the tool box and got the spare plug, spare spark plug out. And that goes on there, screwed with the engine. Now I've had a quick look at the instructions and it doesn't say whether you take that crush washer off or not. If you take it off, this is a little bit thinner maybe. The spark will be a little bit closer to the piston. If you leave it on, it's going to be a little bit further away. I'm going to leave it on because I'd rather be further away from the piston than near it. But I'm not quite sure how much that's going to affect the spark and the, the fuel, the ignition. But we'll see. This one now, I really just wrap the uh, wire round. Wrap signal four to five turns tightly around the engine spark plug wire. It's got programmable firing pattern. So this is the thing that we need to think about for the Lambretta. It'll be a single, uh, single engine but two stroke. We've got to get make sure we get the right firing combination. And we can um, set a maximum temperature so it will alarm if the engine gets too hot. So this is the wire we have to wrap around the spark plug cap. 45 times, so we'll do four and a half. Nice and tight. Like that, that's nice and neat. Get some electricians to here. So that's the tachometer set up, that's nice and simple. That goes on. And um, I think we'll try that first. Another little rev counter. So we'll uh, see if it reads. I'll tell you straight away that rev count is wrong. There's no way there's 10,000 revs that. Hmm. I'll make sure it's set on the right um, setting and we'll try again. Right, I've re read it. It says actually for two stroke insulation, install the wire around the spark plug lead, not the cap. So we'll try that first. We know our settings right. Shame because I made a really nice new job of that. Right. Try that. See if it's any better. Right, I've got Sticky's book. This is a brilliant bus. If you haven't got one, you should have one. Brilliant book. Mine's an Engine Silver Grand Prix. The 125. And it does actually rev quite high there, so that's in powers of 6400.
Right, we're back inside now. Shut the spark plug out, see how this fits. Now, I don't mean to tell, but it's a, it's a little bit wider than the actual plug itself. Um, well, that might be a problem because there's not much of a area free in there, which I'll show you now. Hopefully you can see in there. That has to sit in that gap there. And doesn't quite fit in, which is a bit of a shame. Just have to take a little bit off the edge of it to make it sit in there. So when it's like that, it's got a bit more clearance. When it was like that, this was up against it. That's the way it was, so I'm going to have to put it back in and bend it. If it was like that, it just it won't, it just won't give you the angle. This then hits this um, heat shield shroud. Ah, nothing's ever easy, is it? So it's going to have to go that way. We'll have to flatten that, keep it flat, and bend it from that point. Hopefully, it'll just hit in the hole a little bit better. that try. This black rubber thick bit is up against the cowl so I can't get the spark plug in at the right angle. I've just cut away that little gap there. Hopefully it won't be too sharp. So we'll try that next. That's done it. And keep that over there. Away from the sharp bits. The spark plug is definitely going in now. With that plastic up against it, can't get a spark plug spanner on it. We got the spanner on a bit wonky, but I would say. With that is looking pretty good. So the next thing to do is I should try it. Temperature showing 23.9 degrees there. So as we start the engine up, that should go up. So we've got revs and we've got temperature 23.8. So, I don't even tell, but it's up to 38.7, 39.1 now. So, the temperature's going up. Rev counter worked. I couldn't feel any leaks, any gas coming out of the spark plug. We fit the 
tack on the cable around the ignition coil lead with the, the temperature gauge underneath the spark plug slide to the guard and that's working okay now what they do is run these cables under the floorboards or through the whole cast through the headset and I'll probably velcro it onto the handle bar there so that can be really nice and simple Quite a bit of data. The RPM is not particularly good, it fluctuates a lot, and for some reason, off throttle, the RPM just goes crazy. Uh, it'll go over 12,000 on the reading, obviously, it doesn't, not quite sure why that is. But generally, on throttle, um, especially at the higher range, it seems to be about right. So, my bike for peak power is 6,400 RPM. And it might be also a bit I'm not sure, but you'll see when I take the 6.4 ish on the rev counter, it does appear to be where it's ready to change gear. So, yeah, I'm kind of happy with the RPM, that's okay. The temperature sensor is really good, I'm quite surprised. The skirt runs quite a bit cooler than I thought it would do because I was expecting running at 150 degrees, I was going to set the high line for 180. But generally it runs between 90 and 100. Slow moving traffic goes up to maybe 110 or so. So I've set the alarm for the high temperature to 130 degrees. It's pretty good because it flashes red when it alarms. So yeah. As for the negatives, uh, there's a couple really. Obviously the RPM isn't very good. The temperature display in the actual writing is quite small, so it's sometimes quite difficult to see the temperature. The battery meter has dropped a little bit already, so the battery might not last long, but certainly not as long as I thought it would do. Um, and that doesn't help because you can't actually turn the, dis the display off, the screen off. If you could do that, then you can with the GPS speedometer, I think the battery would last a lot longer. That's a bit of a bad one. So overall, the tachometer was easy to fit, just a way quite on the lead. The temperature sensor was a bit more tricky, and it did take quite a long time to file down the circle to the same size as the spark plug. And I had to cut away some of the cowling, I had to get my dremel out to cut away some of the cowling to make it fit. Um, thankfully, I didn't have to grind away any of the cylinder head fins, which I have seen one person have to do with that. So I'm happy with it, yeah, I think it's well worth it, even if it's just for the temperature sensor, it's a bit of a peace of mind. Um, so I hope you found it useful, if you did please give me a thumbs up, and um, consider subscribing to the channel to see more of the same. Thanks for watching and keep the faith.